Hello and welcome back. Thanks for stopping by for the second video here in the series that I'm uh, doing, basically covering my lab trip and uh, some of the tests that I did in the Human Powered Health Lab uh, back at the end of the last season. As I mentioned in the first video, I'm really not doing this to cover my own personal numbers that I got out of the trip, more to discuss why I did each individual test. So the first video, I talked about uh, some non-performance tests like a DEXA scan and a basal metabolic rate. This video is going to talk through um, a lactate profile testing um, on the run, as well as a VO2 max test that I did right afterwards. So let's go ahead and get started. While both of these tests can be very useful, I definitely find a lot more um, valuable information from the lactate testing uh, itself, at least valuable information in terms of using the numbers for the here and now. Uh, VO2 tech max testing can be really helpful for showing trends over time. The components that go into a VO2 max or what, you know, how they determine it is heart rate times stroke volume times your uh, A minus V difference. So the oxygen that is in your arteries minus your veins. All right. So that's basically showing uh, how efficient you are at pulling the oxygen out of the blood and actually using it. So when we look at the trends over time, really heart rate isn't that trainable, right? So your max heart rate is is not going to change that much. If you you know want to talk about it in the most simplistic ways, every every year on your birthday you lose one beat from your max heart rate because you know the estimating equation is 220 or minus your age. So that's really not a uh, one that we're going to think about too much. Uh, stroke volume basically is how much blood your heart is pumping out with each beat, and that is a little bit trainable you can get a stronger heart you know for example so as you uh, become more and more trained you might that number might actually be going up but the most trainable component of this is that you know the oxygen utilization one of the earliest uh, adaptations that we have to endurance exercise is we start to increase the capillary bed density in the working muscles themselves so the capillary system in you know if we're running or cycling the capillary system in our legs is going to become more dense um, and that basically slows the blood down and allows the muscles more time to grab the oxygen out of the out of the blood and you know that so when that happens that number goes up so as a result of that training adaptation our vo2 max will go up right so being able to track this number over time can show basically your overall fitness over time you know in the here and now you know it's a it's a great number uh for bragging rights and, and things like that you know if you're comparing it over time then that's where that one becomes a little bit more useful for the protocol that I used for this test, I took my LT1 from the lactate test, so the speed at the first inflection point of the lactate, and you know set it at flat and started there, and then every minute I um, increased the incline and went to failure. So you know made it at LT1, um, you know up to eight percent. Um, so from a, a ter in terms of a pacing strategy, you know there's not a lot that you can bring forward into your current training. Um, it's really just getting that number to compare to, to past numbers. There is actually a lot of information that you can get from the lactate test that you can apply to your current training in both you know, in trying to dial in your zones, but also a lot on the nutrition planning side of things as well. So with this test, you start at you know, whatever speed that you choose and move up in um, every either three, four or five minutes, um, depending on what protocol that you want to use. It really doesn't matter as long as you're, you know, if you're gonna use these tests to compare over time that you are using the same protocol. So uh, I basically did the same protocol that I always do um, and um, basically started, you know, moving the um, speed up in, you know, the same incremental blocks and taking a lactate test right before you, uh, right before you move the speed up to the next round. And uh, at the HPH lab, they had two lactate monitors, which is great because oftentimes, especially on the run one, when you're moving around a lot, if you hit the skin, you'll get a number that doesn't make sense. So they're able to take double readings for each one and uh, you know, make sure that they're getting a really accurate report. 
what you're looking for with this test um, for the number, you know, are basically the paces that are, and the heart rates that are associated with an inflection in your lactate. So you get a lactate curve and a heart rate, um, you know, basically curve as well, you know, that follows a pace curve. So you get those three, you plot them out and you're looking for inflections. So where, you know, the lactate started to ramp up at a faster rate. And then you line that up with your heart rate and the pace. And that would be, you know, the first time you notice that that's LT1. The second time you notice that that's LT2. And then, you know, basically, you know, you do one more phase to make sure that, you know, the, the lactate line still stays parabolic. Then you know that you've got to the finish line. You, you don't need to do... Uh, a test to max on this one. You don't need to fail on it like you do the, the VO2 max. The VO2 max test is actually to failure. This test is just until you're confident that you've hit uh, that LT2 number because those are the two numbers that are really important for setting uh, and dialing in your zones. One of my big pet peeves uh, in the coaching industry is you know that it's become standard you know because whatever year the uh, triathlon training bible uh, was written that you you do one test you know on the cycling it's a twenty minute test and that you use that number to set the zones and and you know that's okay if you're looking for just kind of an average program um, but we can do so much better. The technology that we have available now allows us to, to do so much better. Um, and so using, you know, using a, a lactate test can help us set each one of the individual zones specifically to the person rather than just saying, okay, here's one number, you know, on average, everybody's going to be, you know, in this, this percent to, you know, plus or minus that, uh, you know, 20 minute test and calling it good. If, if we really, you know, wanted to be snarky about that, like, you know, if we use the, the 20 minute test rule that, you know, came out in the nineties or whatever, um, you know, the fastest sprinter would automatically be the fastest, um, long distance athlete because we're using, you know, one number and saying, okay, here are their zones above, here are their zones below, and you know, it, it's all standard percentages. What we know is that there are people who are more like diesel engines and who perform really well on the you know, LT1 or top of zone two kind of uh, area, and there are people who have a much more developed top end and do a lot better and per will perform a lot better on the top end work. And so we need to have zones that are unique to the individual. And so this test is one of those tests that can really help us dial in the exact paces or the exact heart rates that uh, an athlete should be uh, training at and you know when you're trying to accomplish a specific goal to carry on with that a little bit farther um, being able to see the, the the kind of the distance or the speed difference or heart rate difference uh, between your LT1 and LT2 can tell you a lot about your athlete and you know as a coach it can tell you a lot about where you need to spend some time uh, developing that athlete if there's a huge gap between LT1 and LT2 for example uh, maybe they have a really well defined top end um, and they need to work on the efficiency to try to bring the LT1 the la the you know, maybe the Ironman race pace or half Ironman race pace for some people, you know, depending on, on who you're, who you are, but maybe try to bring that up. So you're working on efficiency measures and, and trying to do a lot more training in that um, area to, to uh, make that them a, a more efficient athlete, where if there's not a big gap, they're really narrow, then maybe that we need to spend a, a block going into the top end zones and really trying to push the ceiling higher um, before spending time developing that LT1 area. Um, and, and so it can be really beneficial to see these numbers specifically. And then finally, I mentioned that you can use this test to really dial in a fueling strategy, um, especially if you do it close to, to race day. And, and this was the specific reason that I went to um, the lab. I did this leading into a marathon. I set it at my goal marathon pace, or I made sure that the goal marathon pace was one of the numbers that we were, were hitting in the ramp up. And then I wanted to be able to see um, basically how much carbohydrate I was needing to replace in order to fuel the you know goal of 218. It ended up being 222, but uh, the goal of that race. And so, basically, when you are using the mask, um, you're getting 
a couple different numbers, but one of those numbers is the respiratory exchange ratio. And this number is really important for dialing in your overall nutrition strategy. I don't want to, you know, give anybody, um, you know, flashbacks to the, um, you know, whatever junior high chemistry when you learn stoichiometry. So basically you have a carbohydrate, which is C6, H12, O6, and you add oxygen, six of them, and that breaks down in the body um, and gives you six waters and six carbon dioxide. So that's a one to one ratio. That's a lot more complicated. So we can skip that right now. But just know that with you're burning 100% fat, that's more like a, a 0 0.70. So you can use these numbers to figure out how much fat and how much carbohydrate that you're using at any given intensity or speed. And so, you know, you might get a 0.85 that we'll say is roughly 50% of your energy from carbohydrate and 50% of your energy from fat. And so you can use this um, and you know break those numbers down to figure out exactly how many calories per hour that you're burning, as well as how much of those calories are coming from carbohydrates. And you can use that number to work backwards and really develop your fueling strategy if you're planning on you know running a marathon at you know whatever pace and that's 85% um, or you know, you get 0.85, so it's 50-50, then you know, okay, I, I'm burning this many carbohydrates an hour. I know roughly how much I've, I can store or how much of that stored carbohydrate I can rely on. Then you can kind of, again, figure out what you need to replace. Another uh, thing that you can get from this number, you know, the, from that respiratory exchange ratio is how efficient you are at burning fat or what your fat max is. And this has uh, been given a lot of attention to um, in the research lately is, is trying to figure out uh, how to raise that fat max, whether it's through, you know, a fasted training, through ketone use, you know, so on and so forth. And, um, you know, knowing what your fat max is, where, you know, the max maximum amount of fat that you're burning at a given time or at a given intensity, knowing those numbers can really help you identify if you're an athlete that's going to be able to benefit from doing a block of fasted training, or if you're not going to uh, really need to spend time on that. I mean, a lot of in people who come to endurance athletes are really efficient and really burn um, a high percentage of fat at pretty decent speeds. And so they might not be somebody who's going to benefit from it. So it might not be worth the uh, the time spent doing a fasted training block, for example. So again, these are, are things that you can get from the lactate test um, by doing it the right way. As with anything, you know, just getting the data, just having the test and getting some good Instagram pics isn't really enough. What you really have to do is be able to use the information and apply it to your own personal training or, or have a coach do it for you. Um, Obviously, as many of you know, I've been partnering with HumanGo, um, and and more like right now, it's been uh, highly consulting and just talking to them about the future development and things like that, and where where that uh, AI side of things needs to go. But um, one of the great things about this, you know, this test is you can actually upload your data into um, the the platform and it's it's automatically there and then we'll adjust your training for you it'll continue to get better and better at um, using those numbers um, you know especially on the on the higher ends for you know um, you know the elite athletes that that's coming down the road um, it'll it will hopefully get there soon um, but you know that's a, a an exciting direction that uh, is currently possible with the platform. And so, yeah, changes will continue to be made on that front and improvements will, will continue to come. That's really all I've got for you on this video. It's probably uh, well long enough here. Uh, so the next video we'll cover is um, a gait analysis, a test, test that I did, and then uh, a comparison between training flats and uh, my on carbon or on bo cloud boom echo threes. Um, so that's what uh, is going to be the third video of this series.